What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and welcome to Tips and Tricks episode 17. On old school mobile, you can actually lower the frame rate, which really increases your battery performance and how long your phone's gonna last. To change your frame rate, you have to go to settings and then go to the joystick in the top right and then click on the mobile phone looking thing. And then by tapping the gear next to limit FPS, it limits the frame rate to either 30, 20 or 15 FPS. 15 is pretty horrible and even 30 is a lot less smooth than having that setting off. But as I said, if you'd like to save battery, for example, on a long journey, or if your phone doesn't really put up that well against games, then definitely use this limit FPS option. Now, the second tip, which is the title of this video, is how to get better loot from Clue Scrolls, specifically Easy Clue Scrolls. I confirmed this one with Mod Ash yesterday, and opening an Easy Clue casket on Entrana does give you an increased chance of getting a God Page. The reason for that is you can't receive any weaponry or armor on Entrana. If you've done a lot of Easy Clues, you'll know that you get a lot of random pickaxes, coifs, leather armor. Well, you won't get any of those valueless rewards if you open the crate on Entrana. These are mostly counted as dangerous items, so if you hit one of them, it will re-roll that slot on the clue scroll. Took me a while to research this because a lot of people think that it doesn't help and it makes your clue scrolls worse, but Modash has confirmed this. My next tip is how to gain more XP when you're training with magic. When you auto cast magic normally, per hit that you do, you get 2 XP in magic and 1.33 XP in hit points, totaling 3.33 XP per damage. If you use defensive casting for magic. You get 1.33 magic, 1 in defense, and 1.33 in hit points, which turns out to a total of 3.66 XP, which means you get an extra 10% XP per hour, or in total, when you use defensive casting. It is possible to get up to 200k magic and defense XP per hour if you're bursting, and this will increase your overall XP rate by 10%. If you've just been cleaned in old school or you're very, very poor, salamanders are a great cheap training method. The ammo for salamanders cost one coin each, and they actually give decently high bonuses. On range, it gives you the same strength bonus as rune arrows. And then on the melee mode, it gives you the same strength bonus as a dragon longsword. The next tip is to be wary when using the bulwark. Using the special attack damages people in an area effect which means you should be very, very careful, especially at the Revenant Caves, since there's a very, very good chance of sculling if you accidentally special attack who you're fighting. This is the same with the Scythe, but I doubt anyone's gonna be taking that into the wilderness. A lot of people are actually unaware that if you bury a bone in the Catacombs of Kurend, you get prayer points. You get one prayer point for normal bones, two for big bones, and four points for dragon bones. Using a Bone Crusher, this automatically buries the bones and gives you prayer points as you kill the monster. However, you can use the dragon bone necklace to make this effect work anywhere. So you can bury a bone anywhere while wearing the necklace and you'll get prayer points restored. This works with the bone crusher and it requires level 80 prayer to wear, but the effect does not stack at the catacombs of Kurand. So you shouldn't take a dragon bone necklace into the catacombs of Kurand, but always keep in mind this method to bury bones for prayer points. So that summarizes episode 17 of Tips and Tricks. If you learned something or found it pretty interesting, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.